It's entirely possible you've never even heard of this woman, and apologies if you have, but she and her deeds grew to inspire the most famous writers of the ancient world. She is Telesila, the warrior poet, and this is her story. And whatever the truth of her tale may be, her legacy is glorious. She was an icon of the ancient past. So now we delve, as usual, into the ancient sources to piece together the life and legend of a woman of Argos who was both lyric poet and unlikely general, defender of the realm. Her name was forged in war. Though she is renowned for many other things, as we will soon see, it is war over all else which put her on the map, whether in praise or denial. Our story begins in the centre of a heated dispute between the Spartans and the Argives, the people of Argos, towards the end of the 5th century BCE. What, you may ask, does a war between Sparta and Argos have to do with the poet Telesila? I'll answer in the spirit of the day, with a cryptic oracle uttered by the Pythian priestess at Delphi to the Argives long ago. But when the feminine defeating the masculine drives him away and wins glory for Argos, we'll yet have tears running down many Argive cheeks. So some might say later that among the marching men, a terrible three-headed snake was destroyed utterly by the spear. Confused yet? Don't worry, the Argives were too. The primary cause of this conflict was settlement of the abundant land of Thyrea in Kinuria, present-day Tsarkonia. Sparta had taken it from Argos in 546 BCE at the Battle of 300 Champions, Hermacha Tantriakosion Agonistan in Doric Greek, and Argos wanted it back. The Agiad, or senior Spartan king of the time, was Cleomenes I, Leonidas' older half-brother and a pivotal historical figure. So seeing the impending threat of the Argive forces, he rallied Sparta to war, and they answered his call. The armies of Sparta and Argos marched to meet near the old Mycenaean kingdom of Tiryns at Sepia in 494 BCE. Cleomenes was certain of his victory, and though Argos was playing everything safe due to the uncertainty of Apollo's oracular utterance earlier, it was a wipeout victory for Sparta. The men of Argos were cut down under the rays of dawn, and went on to burn in a sacrilegious act of utter ruthlessness by Cleomenes in a sacred grove. Moreover, their defeat left the city of Argos bereft of its fighting force, for all its fit male soldiers were gone. And so, as legend has it, Cleomenes moved his army on towards Argos, intent on ending this struggle for good. Enter Telesila, the only one who would stand up to the marching feet of Spartan hoplites, getting closer by the hour. But before we hear just how she faced down her enemies, let's learn a bit more about her. Born in Argos, we're not sure exactly when, to a presumably wealthy family, she Musas Therapephine served the Muses and became Thafmazestai the Apoetiken Hupoton Gunaikon, admired by women for her music. Such a report by Plutarch is certainly an understatement, as we know she gave her name to an entire style of poetry, the Telesilin Glyconic Meter, and she was praised for her work by Saint Jerome, Pausanias, Hephaestion, Eusebius, and many more. Our remnants of her poetry are sadly pretty lacking, but we know that she wrote this. Have Artemis o Korai, Fevguismat on Alpheon. Hades, Artemis, women, may you escape Alpheon. Now the question arises, was she famous before the Battle of Sapir or after? Well, I ask you this. If she was, then certainly she is deserving of fame, and if she wasn't, then whatever occurred when Cleomenes reached the city walls of Argos made her a household name. 
As sadly we cannot know the entire truth of this legendary event, we can only know that it served to make Telesila a byword for female heroines for centuries to come. So what did happen? Well, as the tips of Spartan spears crested the horizon, Telesila had rallied the infirm, the old, the women of Argos, and placed them atop the battalions and the walls. Some say this ragtag army sallied forth and beat back Cleomenes, sending him packing to Sparta, tail between his legs. Others say that Cleomenes refused to fight such an army, for no honour would be in such a victory. Whichever you choose, Telesida is remembered for standing firm against a far greater army when the men of her city had already fallen beneath its blades. This is why the oracle I quoted before is so interesting. Hotan hethelia ton arsena nikesasa, when the feminine defeats the masculine. Many scholars stop at the Spartan victory at Sapir and say, well, Sparta, a feminine name, something I have a whole video on, defeated Argos, a masculine name and thus the oracle is explained. But the more romantic among us likes to think it is symbolic of Telesila and the Argive women beating back the Spartan men of Cleomenes, and certainly the people of Argos would have wept tears for their loved ones either way. Argos celebrated this victory ever since in the month of Hermaios in a festival called the Hybristica, where gender roles would be inversed. Women would dress as men, wear beards and dominate their husbands in honour of Aphrodite. And for the rest of the year, a statue of Ares commemorated the women who fell in battle, testament to the warrior spirit in all of them. Statues were built of Telesila in her memory all over the Greek world, and Pausanias described one in great detail. It showed her with books scattered about her, and a helmet in her hand, reminiscent of Athena, war goddess of wisdom. <laughs> 